if I'm about to walk into a room with um, a room full of potential investors, what would be your one piece of advice? What would be your one piece of advice? It, so if Alia is about to walk in the room with pitch her idea um, to a room full of investors, what is the advice you can give? Here you go. Oh, it's hard. Uh, for me, I think it's it's a blend of, and we're, we're fundraising at the moment, um, and I think it's a blend of, of clearly being a dreamer, as in, you know, having having a massive, massive goal you want to achieve, but being realistic about it. I see a lot of, uh, I, I hear a lot of, you know, when we, when we go in to pitch to people, we hear a lot of their stories about people who come in, almost like the guy trying to sell 98 quid bitters and selling 100 of them, is you've got to have that tinge of realism to it. So I think they say that passion and enthusiasm can win over anything, but I think that it's it's got to have that. And actually, that's Dawn's point as well, is, is research the opportunity till you're blue in the face and, and know that you've got the answer. And, and there are lots of brand people who tell you the most important thing in a business is the why, is in why you're doing it. But if there's not a gap for your product, then what's the point? And I think it's knowing your numbers. My boss is probably one of the most amazing entrepreneurs He's the third biggest whiskey collector in the world. He's a visionary. He, he's an incredible man. And, you know, I know so many people going to pitch to him, and he knows numbers. Like, he'll look at it and go, that doesn't work. You know, you're not being realistic. So really know your numbers and make sure you have a really clear understanding of what the, you know, is this achievable? I think that's Or really if you important. don't know your numbers, which I don't, have a business partner who does. And that's what I'm lucky to have. Okay. Two more questions. Hi, um, Don. So you did say, obviously, there's no point pitching another unique gin to you. Um, I mean, what would another? What would make it appealing to you to just listen to another gin pitch? And so um, I think the second part of the question would be, um, if the uh, category you're in is really not big and you're trying to find that benchmark that you can test your product against, what would you suggest in, in, in areas where it's really hard to find, when it's not another gin, but uh -huh. something else? like? Um, I think that's a really good question. So gin for me at the moment, I'm delisting gins quicker than I'm buying. Um, why? Why am I doing it against what everyone on the planet is saying? Because I want to be the trendsetter in five years. Not the I don't care about the trend now. So for me, I'm growing rum as a category, I'm growing mezcal as a category, I'm growing non-botanical spirits as a category, non-alcohol, you know, or low alcohol. I think when you're a buyer, you have to have vision. You have to be, I want to be the person that's known to launch the best products. And that's about looking at it. So, you know, with gin now, yeah, I take gins on that are good. I want good liquid. If it's not good liquid, don't even bother me. Like now I turn around and I'm like, no, no, I say no probably to 95% of the gins I try because they're not different. Um, how do you benchmark when you're in a, in a something that's not got much to benchmark against it? Benchmark against liquid. You know, if you're, liquid is balance. Balance is the most important thing in liquid. So, you know, nothing should stand out. The alcohol should be balanced. The texture should be good. Go and look at other spirits that are well known to have good quality. So, you know, if you're taking, let's take botanical spirits, you know, that's not really a category. Well, at the moment, it's not really a category. We're developing it as a category because I think it is interesting because I'm sorry, gin, the clue is in the title. It should f***ing taste of juniper. Excuse my <laughs> French. Uh, but actually, non-botanical spirits is much more interesting because you can go out and you can play with different flavors and profiles and things like that. Uh, but there's not much, because maybe one, if you look at what the guys, at um, ex-Noma guys, what they called, my God, brain's gone dead, Renee. Um, are doing, you know, they were benchmarking against things that were similar. So it might be a Jennifer you benchmark against because your botanical spirit has a little bit more sort of aniseedy notes or something. You know, look at something that's similar. Um, and, and actually, if you're doing something that's not really kind of got a lot of scope around it, it's a good thing. Just go and give it to people to taste and say, do you like this? You know, at the end of the day, people will tell you it's good, it's bad, it's indifferent. 